But let me tell you a bombshell. That was a good word you used, bombshell. After years, I, I went into agreement that psychiatry, you know, people who've had electric shock and all that, there must be evil. I really swallowed all that. Now, here's the bombshell. I used to meet with a guy called Marty Rathburn, who was second in command. I used to meet with him in a hotel just by the Los Angeles airport. And he said, Karen, sit down and take some deep breaths, breaths of oxygen. <laughs> Hubbard ordered Sarge. Sarge was a, pet, a nickname for his uh, caretakers. Everyone has a handyman. You, you know, you have your contractor or handyman, that Mr. Fix-It guy. He ordered Sarge, his Mr. Fix-It guy, to build an e-meter or just to make additions to an existing e-meter that would electric shock him so violently because he has a BT, a body thetan, a attached spirit that is evil and he can't get rid of it. He's not able to exercise it out of his system. So he wants this electric shock machine built to give such a jolt to get rid of this spirit, but it would also terminate his life. Oh and you God. know, I, I suffered an implosion spiritually and then an explosion because with all that training I had, burning the midnight oil, 60 to 80 hour weeks, earning a pittance, studying Hubbard, listening to Hubbard, listening to the evil of electric shock. Electric shock was the pinnacle evil of psychiatry. See, we're telling you psychiatry, say, look what they do. They electric shock people, they scramble these BTs. All these attached spirits get scrambled like scrambled egg. <laughs> Electric shock. Wow. And then Hubbard orders an electric shock machine. First of all, suicide is considered an evil purpose. It's evil because you should want to survive. You shouldn't want to knock yourself off. And there was Hubbard, the great guru, asking his assistant, to build a shock machine which at, and, the, and there are a couple of videos online you don't have to take my word for it I'm gonna I'm gonna post the videos are pretty short but the guy who was asked to build a shock machine was interviewed by Pulitzer Prize winner author Larry Wright he wrote the book going clear uh -huh. Okay. And Larry grabbed Sarge while Sarge was still alive. He died a few years ago. Good. He got him on video to tell the whole story of how Hubbard ordered him to build a shop machine. So just to finish the story, we, we have to make this pithy. Yeah. And he, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't. He was dragging his feet. He was nudged and pressured. And he built one that would just give Hubbard a jolt, painful enough but not kill him. And Hubbard yeah, got that. And then it was painful enough. He never then said, make me a stronger one. He dropped it. But the thought that the guru I believed in wanted electric shock to handle an evil beat that he wasn't able to. Even if the I, hypothesis was that he did have a spirit, that he I could have to follow. ask you something about this, Karen. <laughs> Go ahead. This is so important. I've been noticing this with a lot of cult leaders, and I wouldn't be shocked if your answer is yes. The, building up the question to ask: Do you believe that L. Ron Hubbard actually believed in his own BS? I do. I do. Hmm. I do believe. It. I believe it. 
you know, when a person goes into an altered universe and they're a little crazy, you see a, a, a someone pushing a shopping cart and he's talking to the wind, he's homeless. He really believes right. that the wind and the air is listening to his babble as he talks. When you enter a wacko world, you don't know you're hallucinating. If you did, you would call, <laughs> I'm being delusionary here. Mm -hmm. Or you should. No, I believe Hubbard did believe. You see, I think he did have a few breakthroughs and I think early on he did want to help, but he told his high tech terminal, David, David Mayo, senior, senior, senior case supervisor, very, very high up in the tech hierarchy. And he told David, I have such a lust for power and money. I, I, I crave, he admitted this. And David Mayo was stunned. That was David Mayo's bombshell. My bombshell was after believing in the evil of psychiatry and how electric shock was the ultimate evil that Hubbard would want electric shock and to kill himself, which is anything but a noble purpose. Wow. That was my bombshell. David Mayo's bombshell was Hubbard said, I crave power and money. I crave it. And in those days, once a week, one million dollars in cash was being sent to him in his hideout called Creston Ranch near San Luis Obispo, Northern California. David Miscavige rose up the ranks because he pampered Hubbard with one million dollars in cash every week, hundred dollar bills, hundred dollar bills. The suitcase would go to the drop location and Pat Broker would pick it up and Hubbard got one million dollars. This was scooped out of all the different satellite all the people who bought books, this and that, scooped, scooped out one million dollars. So when Hubbard died, there are a couple of conflicting reports, but my husband writes the Scientology Money Project. I think he said, and he's got all the documents to back it up, Hubbard the Guru died with something like 540 million dollars. Wow. which went to Church of Spiritual Technology. Oh my God, the corporate shenanigans. Church of Spiritual Technology licenses for money. Religious Technology Center, RTC, to allow them permission to use Hubbard's works. Wow. It's a corporate maze. Yeah. So RTC then licenses and orgs have to pay nice hard cash for permission to use Hubbard technology. It's a spider web of cannibalization where the bigger fish eats the little fish and sucks out the <laughs> protein of the little fish. This, this is how. So that was, that was truly my bombshell. Wow. But I liked what we touched on and I really liked, <laughs> you get in the church thinking, you know, they're going to, Take my goodness and make my goodness better goodness. So if I have good features, they'll strengthen that because I'm in therapy with them. Mm -hmm. oh, come on, Derek. They want your evil. What about in your fundamental evil? Yeah. Did they go after your hidden hidden little shenanigans? Is that did they do that? Well, you know what's weird? I think there was more honesty in our version of it, to be honest, because the idea that we're in in we're innately good, uh, that we're born good or we have goodness, that wasn't in my Christianity. My version of Christianity oh. said we are born wicked. 
We are born evil and only God and his spirit can save us. And so you're born this wretch. They use the term wretch. You're a wretch. You're a wicked, horrible, uh, evil person. And your heart is desperately wicked, uh, which, in you know, the way we understood heart, they, they there's some interesting things we conflate our mind with heart and antiquity because they didn't think the mind is where the thoughts come from. They thought it was literally somewhere in an organ down here. Uh, but either way, it's really interesting to hear because they view you as this, this nothing. You're, you're horrible. And that God would even care to save wow. you. You need to be thankful that he chose you. Uh, the version I eventually went to was a version called Calvinism where God predestined people. And he chose me, I thought. And uh, this is, you know, one of the things that uh, they believe is that really the only good you have ever, even after God's spirit comes to you, is that God is living in you. You are not good. And even Paul, you know, like has these ideas. I am a greater sinner than all of you, he talks about. Like he's the biggest sinner. I'm the worst of you all. I'm the most horrific. Uh, so that's the kind of view. At least there's. When I say honesty, I don't mean that that's true. What I'm saying is, is they're not trying to pretend you're good. And then their entire system is a lie acting like, well, you're good, but we're going to spend all our time trying to fix the bad about you. Well, if I'm good, then why do I need to be fixed? You know, uh, what's, what's the problem? And th my worldview was also a horrible one as well. Mm, wow. That was incredibly, I, I grew up in Church of England and sort of Catholic version. And there are hymns where you you ask for mercy because you're a miserable wretch. Mm -hmm. the, the, the line, the one where you, you're this. You see, before you ask, why did you, you're highly educated, you're not a dummy, you weren't right. just fallen off the turnip truck. Why did you get sucked into the that? Well, I, I thought about the concept of God a lot. And I thought they're saying God will forgive you. God will elevate God, God. Therefore, he would have to have mercy and kindness and huge generosity and bigness of heart if he's going to do all this. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at just horrific orphans who are beaten, pedophiles who invade children's privates, when you look at the absolute darker side of people who do all this, why would a so-called merciful God right. just allow that much it didn't add up for me right, right? that God could be sitting somewhere in the sky and didn't even have the power to slightly amend very gross conduct. Children who are starving in parts of Africa, mm -hmm. just women who are being raped nightly by the soldier, none of this. So to me, God didn't seem to be affected. Either he was so great that he could create and he could, create the biggest effects or he he had no causation level he couldn't be the source of anything because he left everything alone based on me trying to fathom all that out i came to the conclusion you see in scientology there is no god well it's not necessary oh, let me, let, i don't know if we're reaching the end of our half hour but let me this is another bombshell yeah 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 scientology says you are actually God. Keep paying us. We we'll take you higher, higher, higher. And you'll come to the realization that you, me, everyone in a joint co-create. We created the planets way back then in some earlier existence. We are God. Hmm. There's this... Uh, woman who does the impersonation of Mark Simpson. And there's a lovely little video clip I should send you where she said, yeah, I know I'm giving Scientology a lot of money. They're going to make, 
going to, because I'm striving to be God. And that's what Scientology has promised that I will be. Now, that's a big celebrity, the voice of Mark Simpson, mm -hmm. who says it in black and white. Interesting. We, you know, so, so there's another spin. I mean, imagine. <laughs> what level did you have to be at, if you can remember, to know, uh, to know that we created the universe or the, the planets in, the, in billions and trillions of years ago? What level was it when you found out a lot of this really strange science fiction, but to you it was facts? In, in, right. Derek, that's confidential. What they tell you is... Don't ask questions like that. Right. All will be revealed. Just keep going. <laughs> believe. <laughs> believe. Just believe. All these answers will appear and you will you will get every answer you need about God and the Supreme Being. And you know, when people walk in the door to get their money sucked out. They're never told there is no God in Scientology. Never, never, never. They're never told you're just infested with 400 million spirits all glued to you and your body. They never told any of that. That's the bait and switch. That's what's so dishonest. If you ask questions like, well, do you worship? Do you have a, some, you know, is, is there a God? They go, you're asking a very sensitive question. Secret. You got to, you got to stay with us, and right. as you do the levels, all will be revealed. Yeah, the same. So, so you're, <laughs> so you went straight to a one level. <laughs> yeah. Never answer that. The major switches. So, to answer that question, though, when do you remember finding out? What level were you at that you figured out the secrets? And I know there are probably different secrets for different levels, but the science fiction stuff, the idea of Xenu, yeah. OT3 is the is the Xenu. And you know, Derek, it's such an earthquake that some people look at it and they walk out the door never to be seen again. They just I mean, they got some gain, they communicate better, they had a little this and that, a little buzz. And then they read this, and it's like, what wall, what universe do you live in? Are you really going to make me swallow this? Oh there is a percentage. Gosh. There is a percentage. And then there are others that are just struck. And if they say, I, I don't know if I can quite swallow this thing, some people are more polite and in a dignified manner, try to. Uh, Interesting. The, the, the cult response is the only reason you cannot have this is you've got too much charge, baggage, negative energy. We need to strip off more you're overcharged. Your degree of awareness into Hubbard's truths is directly proportional to us relieving you of your negative charge. And so you go, oh, it's my negative charge that is so clouding my awareness and perception. So it always points back to, you're not up to it. You're, you're overloaded yeah. with with trauma, we need to more money. You need a hundred hours more. <laughs> <laughs> this is wild. This is where the bite model comes in and how these cults really get you. And, and you do it so well. Uh, everyone I've talked to that watched you really enjoyed our last episode. I know for a fact, they're going to enjoy this one. There's so much we did not talk about Karen and we will talk about, make sure you guys go check out her YouTube channel as well. All of that's down in the description. Give us a like here. Let us know what you think of this conversation because there's so many questions I could ask Karen, but our time is up for today. Karen, would you have anything you'd like to say before we close? You know, exposing myths is, is, is a good thing. It's a really, really good thing, Derek. 
I, 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 I'm happy you have this channel, you know, whether you believe you just live your 75 years or whether you believe certain things are so vital. Wisdom, knowledge, and truths are should, a high priority. You can always eat a ham sandwich. You can always kick a ball. But to get a little nugget of truth and realize that scams are not just internet, you know, buy this rubber ball and put it in your washing machine and your wash will be cleaner. Isn't that, isn't that, scams can be what gets ingrained in your mind. Derek, I'm so happy you pluck out your questions. are very clever. I'm so happy you <laughs> get to am the I, essence. Am I planting my probes into your yes, mind? Yes, yes. Good, absolutely. good. Well, I hope I did the same for the audience uh, as you answered and really elucidate this information in a way that no one else does that I hear. And I really enjoy that coming from you. My parents were really more happy. more fundamental than good and evil. So good and evil, this is, this is, this is, this is a basic good and evil. Derek, thank you so much. Hey, audience, if you've come this far in the show, that means you watched it all. Please, please click a little donation for, for Derek. Oh, you Be rock. A participant to keep the show on the road. Don't just be a spectator that you watch and hit and run. Contribute to the motion. Thank you very much. I'll Karen, be back. You rock. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, go subscribe to our channel. We love you, Karen. Let's do this again. And never forget, we are MythVision.